All right, ladies, I'd like to propose a toast. Uh, here's to the ladies right. who lunch, right? Yeah, well, here's to the men that we love, here's to the men that love us, but sometimes the men we love don't love us, so fuck men, and here's to us. Cheers. Yay. Ugh. That was tasty. I love that. Mm. That was lovely. <coughs> All right. Oh, okay, I need to wash that down. <laughs> Hi, how are you? Hi. Okay. Do they respond? Is that how this works? No. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, everyone, and welcome once again to A Gem of a Secret Podcast. My name is Donatella My Secrets. My name is Coco Jim Holiday. And my name is Autumn Rains Hart. And today, we're going to be talking about Camp Wanakiki, Season 2, Episode 6. Oh Coco, God. Autumn, how are you doing today? I'm doing lovely. How are you? I'm, I'm lovely. I'm I... feeling it. Yeah. What? <laughs> the shot we took earlier. Yes. Oh, boy. We have to not be sober to do this. <laughs> Party. I've never been sober a minute in my life. Here's the fetal alcohol syndrome. Because drag Hi. what fucking hurts. Party. <laughs> All right. I haven't been sober once. <laughs> All right, so uh, let's start off by talking about the uh, contestant that was eliminated last week, and that was our king, Boris to death. Boris I cried a death. whole tear. It was so upsetting. Oh, gosh, that was hard. Uh, the internet has not been as mean towards me as I thought they would be. No. Because um, I, like I tell Donna, I emotionally cut. <laughs> yes. I read all the comments, every single one, everywhere I can find them. I, I don't would know never. What it is. It's, I don't know, it's intense. Where are they the nicest? Not Reddit. <laughs> Not Reddit. Reddit doesn't love Coco Jim Holiday. Um, YouTube is actually pretty fine. Uh, YouTube is actually pretty okay. Because, like, Camp on Kiki is such a positive show. So, like, they don't actually... People are not, like, super mean like they are in Drag Race. Yeah. Like, people... Because you think... So, key difference. Drag Race, you lip sync for your life and someone sends someone home. And then Rue makes the decision about who she thinks should go home, right? Yes. So there are two things to be mad at. Rue for, if she, what are you looking at, Rue? Like, oh my gosh, that looks mm -hmm. like the other person did better. And then, of course, the person who actually sent them home. And then in All Stars, literally the person who sent them home. Yeah. So obviously the queens get attacked, right? Yeah. So with ours, it's just the judges who choose. Mm -hmm. Like, we have no power over who they like or who they dislike. Like, I have, like, when me and Boris were standing up there, it's not like, oh, judges, please send Boris home because of blah, blah, blah. Like, yeah. that just doesn't happen. Push him down. Just <laughs> push him down. On the you didn't even Can't get be, to, like, spirit. <laughs> plead your case, really. So no. it's not like, yeah, like, I don't know. I think because you don't have any say in that, that's the reason why maybe fans aren't, like, as, like, vicious as they are. Yeah. Um, what are some good things that you have to say about Boris and meeting him? He is the very first king to be on a drag reality competition, Correct. after all. So. Uh, so Boris is, like, the kindest person ever. Helped everybody out in the competition. Boris is actually incredibly witty. One thing, the critique we're getting about this season is, once again, they're not showing enough of the campers. Mm. They're, they did better this season, but they're still not doing enough. Uh -huh. One thing that people would have learned about Boris if they did have a little bit more camper stuff is that Boris is just... The comedic wit that he has is insane, but mm -hmm. obviously he's not talking a lot during the episode, so it's, mm -hmm. like, hard to find that out. So Boris is super funny, super kind, helped all the campers. I also appreciate a king who tries. There's a lot of kings that are just... They'll step out in their street clothes and then just no makeup or any sort of discernible anything, and they just mm -hmm. just to beaver themselves for three minutes. And Definitely. I really enjoy a, a drag king that can put on a show yeah right you yeah know, that all drag is valid conversation really drives me crazy because all drag is valid not all drag is good, good. yes because like i think it applies like i said this comment on facebook like i was like if a king shows up with gym shorts and a t-shirt and says like well, you know i'm doing a hip-hop song or whatever like that drag might be valid but that's not going to my show <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah sorry about it baby that's not how it works yeah there should be some thought put into your both look and performance and i think as queens we do that a lot i I think that the kings are more doing that. I mean, and the ones that we see represented on these shows definitely have yeah. that. But uh, I think that there's going to be a tide that turns with this king representation being Agreed. on these shows. And hopefully that, you know, also makes it to where more and more kings are inspired to do more and go all out when it comes to their drag. Agreed. Yeah. yeah. All right. So our daily activity was the tree topper. So y'all had to scrounge up some junk and put together a Christmas tree topper. I didn't see a single top in that room. <laughs> well. <laughs> um, no, there was a few. Um, so anyway, uh, so here's the thing, though, about that. Like, um, they kept in all my jokes. Oh, my! I read, because, you know, emotionally cutting internet reading comments. Um, so I read one that just said, what did it say? 
I just don't think Coco's that funny. It's what I got from this episode. Me either. I I know, but like you tell me to my face, and I love that. Um, <laughs> on the internet, trolling me. Um, would so, it be better if they sent a picture of their face while they did it? Actually, I'd be super down. Like if they sent me like a video of just saying, "Coco, I just don't think you're that funny." Like I'd be like, you know, I value that. <laughs> You've had some gems along of of dialogue this season, so I, I don't I don't think that's fair. Yeah, it, it was a little harsh because in this episode, like. So, remember, by this point, like I said with the last episode, brain dead. We're just all brain dead. Like, long filming hours, we're done. Um, you're emotionally so, exhausted, you're Coco physically had exhausted. Eaten in, like, four minutes. Oh my gosh, seriously. Like, it's not like you can leave to get a snack, by the way, during filming. That doesn't happen. Yeah. So you're just there. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Should have collected nuts. <laughs> <laughs> so there's actually no behind-the-scenes tea for this, the, us building our things. Mm-hmm. Obviously... The amount of time they gave us is actually kind of what they gave us. Yeah. We put it all together. So for me, I was trying to look for any, um, something to set me aside, you know, so mm-hmm. I went with Kwanzaa instead of Christmas, um, cause I do celebrate Kwanzaa in my home and mm-hmm. I, I think chose... she's a nice girl. <laughs> she's a nice girl. <laughs> Kwanzaa fusion shade. Uh, she is. Is that her full name? Yeah, yes. Did... Okay. Yeah. Cool. Um, <laughs> So she, uh, sorry, not she, uh, the dolls on the table were little black and brown girls, and so I took all of those, because yeah. none of the other work, white girls wanted those, because of hashtag racism, and um, <laughs> <laughs> so I took the, I took two dolls on the table that were little brown skinned, and I decided to use those as part of my Kwanzaa, um, as part of my Kwanzaa tree topper and whatever. My tree topper wouldn't have sat on a tree, but they, I guess they didn't love it. I don't know why they, they didn't, didn't like it. They didn't like it. It's not that like, they critiqued yeah. them. They're just like, we love that. They, we like, them. only liked well, kitties. They also really didn't like Claire's. They really didn't. <laughs> no, they brought they that were up. Just, they were just like, and then she, like, tried to give it to them, and they're just like, oh, we don't want this. No. <laughs> no. It, honestly, when Claire was putting it together, I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> what in the of, ugly tarnation is well, that? Well, she said that she took some acid and then made it. So, it, I mean, that I, that's the result I feel you would get well, after doing Claire that. Well, if Claire brought acid to cabinet Not chair, that I would know what acid does to you. <laughs> <laughs> Yay, drugs. Yay, drugs. <laughs> if literally Claire brought acid to campus and didn't share, I would kill her. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Nightly talent show theme, Christmas in July, oh, and that is why oh, we're dressed that. this way. We yeah, can so. explain who won the activity, just real quick. Kitty, so Kitty won, I believe. Yes, Kitty did win meow, the activity. Meow. Yeah, yeah, yep. Yeah, she had a good Christmas talk. I thought Diana's was really good. It was uh, some, like, little themes of little pound cake, and yeah. she wanted to get her cake pounded. Yeah, yeah makes sense. Work. <laughs> oh, yeah, so, yeah, we're dressed Christmassy because the theme for this episode was Christmas in July, so we're dressed a little... Little winter wonderlandy. Um, is that what this is? Oh, I guess it's a high fashion I'm, rabbit sweater. I'm trying to be like Mrs. Claus. Bitch, you're Mrs. Claus if she ran a if she ran a brothel. I'm really fine. I'm just with a that description. <laughs> <laughs> like, basically, I, can, I subscribe. Yeah, yeah. No, that's I. I get that from that. I'm just a classy cold lady. Yeah, you look you like look... Joan Crawford is your mom, and she probably hit you at least once. Probably. Wow. Mm. I get that from that. <laughs> <laughs> it's the sadness behind her eyes. Oh, God. Nah, that's from She's depression. not Catholic. It's <laughs> being hit. The Nightly Talent Show. So my... So I want to talk about my look. Uh, we can already say Do we have I... to? Oh, gosh. <laughs> so um, I actually have some behind-the-scenes tea, and actually, this is actually going to make me look worse. You had a really nice outfit, and then they, like, replaced it with an ugly one. Um, no. <laughs> I just, so we, so the whole challenge was we had to craft an outfit out of Christmas junk. Yes. Just junk. It, it was junk. All of it. Even that, and this is actually true, and the sugar bakers can watch this. That white fabric I used for my top, it actually had a stain on it. I'm not joking. It had a stain. And like, I was like, so I was trying to cut that off. So you have to keep in mind, so when I started crafting my outfit, I like, because my tits, as you can see in the show, were super big. Mm-hmm. So obviously I can't sew or craft or cut or whatever because my tits were too big. So I actually took them off. Yeah. Yes. Hi, I'm not a real lady. Um, <laughs> so I took them off to sew and craft. And so when I was trying on the outfit, keep in mind, also behind the scenes, I did not have a breast form, uh, sorry, a body form that was my size. I noticed that. Yeah, when they like so. All right, Jiggly Circus season four. Latrice did it. Why can't you? Um, I did do it as best I could, but honestly, like it sucked because like when I got in there, they're like, "Well, we have two. and I was like, "But I need one." They're like, "Well, we have this other one," and I was like, "That's like a size six. Like, what am I supposed to do with that?" Pat it. They were like, mm-hmm. <laughs> Like, but you have a sewing machine, so there you go. Mm-hmm. Like, so they had two sewing machines in the room for us to use. 
and that was great. However, and I can sew. I made the blue dress that I wanted. Yeah. However, like, that was really challenging because I do use patterns for my body shape because mm-hmm. my weight goes up and down super hard. I make my pads bigger. I make them smaller. So that's just really difficult. But, like, what happened was I didn't have, like, a body form. I didn't have any patterns. So everything was kind of a guess and check for me. And I did super well. Like, so we put the outfit on with kind of what I was wearing, which was my daily drag face and it fit yeah and then when i went back to the room to put on like my titties and whatever and like everything else it didn't fit as well and and the thing is coco can sew i have seen coco sew coco sews Mm -hmm. um she's crafted many an outfit in the living room of the last house we were in and like has a good skill set that we've just been learning probably over the last two years i'd say yeah yeah all i've ever seen coco do is drink hi my name is coco jim holiday (laughs) Nice to meet you. So. Mm. So some other venting about that. Mm -hmm. So the other thing that happened is, I talked to Ruthie about this later, dear Ruthie about this later. She actually thought that there was some stretch fabric in the room. There was no stretch fabric at all. And for a bigger girl, that's like a nightmare. Yeah. Like a skinny girl just only has a problem of making it too big. Oh no, take it in. That's fine. But when you cut fabric as a big girl and it does not fit, you're screwed. Like, yeah. there's nothing else you can do. Yeah. Just, like, jiggly caliente that shit. Like, one corset plus another corset equals one fat-ass corset. <laughs> <laughs> so this was actually really, like, because I was so confident about, yeah. like, even the other campers could tell you, I was super confident about that. Uh, yeah. Not what I was wearing, but, like, the challenge itself. Yeah. And it just didn't go in my favor. And, like, honestly, when I saw what everybody else did, like, I did as best I could with the materials I had. And you can see me in the back. Like, if you actually watch the episode again, go ahead and watch it again. We'll have the link in the comments. You see me and everybody else's shot. I'm literally walking around the room thinking. I'm like, how can I make clothes out of this garbage (laughs) that they have provided for us? Yeah. And I'm, like, looking around, and I'm like, and Barbara's, like, trying to give me ideas, too. She's like, well, what if we make this necklace or this headpiece? So Barbara did make, like, my shoulder piece. She made my necklace. Um... Tora, I think Tora Hyman gave me the idea for the balls and the hair to make it campy. That was actually yeah. her idea. Oh, cool. Uh, Boris gave I like me... That part. Yeah. I love that part, too. And honestly, that's where the camp came from. Yeah. And Boris gave me the idea because I did make the circle skirt and I didn't have enough fabric to make a bottom circle skirt to go underneath it. Uh-huh. Um, so we were allowed to wear our DDF underneath our outfit, which mine has a petticoat. Uh-huh. So I was able to use the petticoat. Oh. And then I had a white circle skirt underneath. And so uh, Boris, when I put it on, Boris was like, I hate this. Yeah. Boris was like, I hate what you're wearing. And I was like, what can fix this? She's like, turn the Christmas tree skirt to the side. I liked the asymmetry of it. Yeah. I well, thought that that was cool. Yeah, yeah. It was somewhat intentional. Somewhat yeah. Bad. So when I put it on, because it was like the top and then it was in the fort, and she was like, I hate that. Yeah. And like, so Boris was like, turn it to the side. And I put it aside. She was like, yeah, that, 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 yeah. that works. Yeah. And so that's kind of where it came from. And that was just a really difficult challenge for a bigger person. And yes, I know Vivica's b- bigger, but Carly Hers and I. was also pretty bad. Yeah, we'll get to that. Um, we will. So, <laughs> so Carly and Item Clay also does, I can't say who she does costuming for, but she has some big contracts for her costume. Well, she did say that she did a contract for an amusement park at some point. Yes. On the show. So. Yes. And it's a huge amusement park mm-hmm. that she did costumes for. Ivana mm-hmm. is also a master seamstress as well. Yeah. And so what Carly did with Vivica, I saw it. She did it exactly the same way you do a wedding dress. Mm-hmm. Like she was paneling Vivica. She was just paneling her. The bottom part of that dress was great. I think we should talk about... Okay, so we yeah. will talk about the two that are in the bottom because... You and Vivica were both in the bottom this week, and right. we're going to talk about those two looks right now. Um, I really enjoyed the bottom part of Vivica's look. I mm-hmm. did not like the top part at all. I did not like that the colors were... It was a lot of blue that was mismatchy blue, and it just didn't... It Like, the top part looked like a different outfit. The and one the hat. Mm-hmm. There was cohesion mm-hmm. with your look. I think the problem I had with her look is that there wasn't any cohesion. And it seemed like it was different looks put together. That's really fascinating. Like, I, in person, because the bottom of Vivica's skirt is wrapping paper. Mm -hmm. We've all used wrapping paper to wrap presents. We know it's not manageable. Carly made a circle skirt out of wrapping Mm -hmm. paper that looked professionally done. Yeah. So, major props for that. Yes. However, I do agree with the non-cohesion a little bit. Yeah. Um, and the top just looked cheap. The fabric looked cheap. Yeah. With the garland and the It looked like discount Joanne's. It did. 
I would have probably killed the garland, honestly. I the, I don't think the She's garland. She's already been dead for a long time, honey. The garland, <laughs> the garland, or the bows on the on the tits cheapened the top of the outfit, and I don't think it was really that necessary. And the the three tits that she tried to do with the the little bows and bows. things, yeah, it was like. Mm. Were there any looks that weren't in the top or bottom that stuck out to you this week? Uh, yes, Claire Apparently's. Yeah, I love Claire Apparently's, and apparently they did not love Claire Apparently. I was expecting, because they dismissed Kitty first, I was expecting Kitty to be the one that was kind of more near the bottom, aside from Claire. Yeah, well, and the funny thing is, like, so when I was there, by the way, that outfit that Ivana made, like, I could see, like, them picking it up at Nordstrom's. Like, it was so well made. It was well made. I just, so well but made. it was kind of weird on the sides because it was, like, open. Yeah. 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 I, it could have been accessorized better, though, too. You it, know, it, like, all. there was no accessories. So. Yeah, they gave me that compliment. They're like, we love that you have accessories, Coco. Yeah. They're like, we love everything from the neck up, which is weird. Um, because it's just jewelry and balls in my hair. Yeah. Um, and then they're like, for the rest, they garbage. They love balls. They love balls. Uh-huh. Yeah. So the top two that we had this week was Tora and uh, Diana. So yeah. what did you, what stood out for you with those outfits? The so, chimney was so cute. It was, it was cute. A cool the detail. story was cute. Mm-hmm. Um, somebody on the internet absolutely hated Taurus tennis shoes. But remember, they said, which I wish they would explain the rules better. In Drag Race, they don't either. Yeah. So I guess it's fair because that would take too much filming. But like they said, all you can wear that's extra is your DDF. Oh. Like, so Taurus tennis shoes are part of her daily drag. Yeah. Race. So you would have had to construct shoes? Yes. That's ridiculous. Yeah. Like, I asked them, I was like, I have other shoes that go be- better with this. And they're like, okay, you can wear those, that's fine. Uh, <laughs> so I asked. Yeah. And they said that was fine. But yeah, Tora wore her daily drag shoes or whatever, so somebody on the internet just hated that. Yeah. And Tora's concept was great. I love Diana's look. I thought it was great. The beard reveal was genius. I really... Was. I just wasn't sure what was in her box. No one has ever done a beard reveal, so that oh, was... Oh, that's true. Yeah. It was Diana kinda... Fire. The first bearded drag queen to do a beard reveal yes. on a drag reality competition series. <laughs> you must be so proud of your mom. That's what a lot. Of, that's a lot of specific. That's. <laughs> it's like when they have that in a spoken world record. They're like, "Are you sure we have to be here to see that?" Like, <laughs> <laughs> I don't think anyone's actually ever done that before first for beard a reveal. reason. <laughs> true. True. That's fair. That's fair. So I want to give Autumn the pleasure because we always say who wins. Who won this week, Autumn Rain Tart? Diana Fire finally won, and thank God for that, because she was going to burn down that chapel. <laughs> she was She was no longer a bridesmaid. No longer a bridesmaid. She finally got married. It's so exciting. She <laughs> won a box. <laughs> she won a box. <laughs> we need more sponsors for Camp One. Hi, because Coco won a drag queen starter kit. Which is and cool. It looks like you need it. Ouch. And, um. <laughs> Insert Rue sound effect. <laughs> the angry rattlesnake. Yeah, angry rattlesnake. Sounds of queens sipping their drinks. Just queens, like. <laughs> <laughs> and it's true. It's true. The fact of the matter is, I. Actually, I do appreciate it because I do. I am going to go back to having non breast form tits yeah for a while and so maybe they can help me with that yeah um, i don't necessarily need help with the nails i want to give that local shout out to rogue safari she's starting to do nails and she i is. love rogue uh and so i want to give her that kind of notoriety but um if they can help me with some new tits or whatever i would super appreciate that so i can go back to dancing and doing stunts and whatever nice so yeah, yeah. cool well yeah we had diana fire as our winner stay tuned next week when we reveal who was eliminated it was coco <laughs> oh, small <laughs> shout out though me and Autumn and Donatella because we are always hanging out we're going to start doing group numbers together for replay so come out to replay every Wednesday at Stag PDX that's how you found them online yes. um, to come and catch some of those numbers because this is our last themed uh, replay for a little bit Good. Um, for a little bit for a little bit well yeah because we'll we'll do other themes as we keep yeah yeah, yeah for sure okay well Thanks once again for tuning into a gem of a secret podcast. Once again, my name is Donatella, my secrets. My name is Coco Gem Holiday. And I forgot my name, but I'm happy to be here. Mm. We'll put the social media in the comments. We will. We will. Cheers. Love you all. See you next week.
to slap it thank first. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate that. Anyone else need topped off? Um, yes. You have rosé in there, so if you want to mix Pinot Grigio with it. I do. Okay. Be not because she's an alcoholic. She just likes to have fun. Alcoholics go to meetings. I Coco's late to those. <laughs> <laughs> Adam just tried to hit me. I, did y'all see that? Adam just tried to hit me. Mm -hmm. no, this I is me taking care. a juice. Um, yeah, we're good. Faggots. <laughs> <laughs> I will fight you. 